All right, I'm back with another Destiny 2 video, and uh, this week was just sort of a lot of ritual playlist type of things, GM Nightfalls and Gambit Labs. Uh, I thought I would concentrate on Gambit Labs, as I don't think that much has changed with GM Nightfalls. Uh, I know there's some debate about whether the burn is being applied right or something. I don't know what's going on there. All I know is that the new shader you get from the uh, Memento thing is very ugly. Gambit Labs is what I think is a good intentioned experiment to try and figure out what exactly is wrong with Gambit. Uh, the long suffering mode that has gone through so many rules changes and tweaks over the years I've lost track. Uh, this current version is a lab called Invader Swap. So the idea here is that you are now summoning an invader on uh, the other team as opposed to like summoning it for yourself. So before you would deposit moats, hit a th th certain threshold, and then that would allow an invader to go rushing in to invade the other side. Uh, and then this would often lead to really, really snowball-y games where um, whoever got the first invasion, and even, even if you got one or two kills, uh, it, it would probably be enough to snowball the entire game in your favor, and you can never recover from it. They changed that a little bit uh, with this season already because they made the threshold higher. So it's now 40 motes and 80 motes instead of 25, 50, and 75. So fewer invasions, uh, later invasions. Uh, and now they are trying this invader swap thing where when you are depositing 40 motes, you are giving the invasion portal to the other team. So you are theoretically giving them an advantage and kind of a way to catch up. Uh, does this work in practice? That's the question. Um, I will say that some of what I'm about to say here is really just team dependent. Uh, Freelance Gambit is kind of just completely all over the place and things that might sound like viable, very obvious strategies are not always going to play out there as you can see in the game I recorded, which is just kind of a mess, uh, myself included, but it's there are a few things that come up here. First of all, uh, I see two ways that the game can go if you have any amount of strategy going on. The entire point of the initial phase now is that you should really probably just be massing until you get 15 modes each, uh, and then quad depositing for uh, 4x giant blockers, and then all you have to do then is avoid getting PvE'd, which my teammates were not able to do in this <laughs> video. Uh, we've all been there, it's fine. Um, because there, there's nothing, there's nothing pushing on you. There's no threat there. Because b before, you know, you would, you would be like, okay, should I deposit at ten, uh, in case they push to twenty five really fast and the invader comes out? But now there's, there's literally just no risk of that happening, um, unless your teammates are depositing weird mode amounts to get up to uh, forty pretty quickly. Like everyone should really just be going for fifteen. <laughs> uh, the other option there is if you are a really, really coordinated team. What you can do is push to like 35 or 39 or something there. Uh, so you're just under the invasion threshold and then you run around and get 15 modes each. You can literally get to 99 modes uh, before you even give them an invasion. Um, this also means that even without those exact numbers, you can rig it so you sort of eliminate one of their invasions altogether and just give them a single invasion during the moat phase. Uh, because if you push from 40 to 80, or if you push from like 35 to 85 or something like that, um, without giving them a break in the middle, uh, then they're not going to be able to invade at all. But this does require a good amount of coordination that Freelance Gambit in particular is probably not going to allow. Uh, it's also a little weird because by triggering an invasion through your moat deposits, you are, generally speaking, like you're... You yourself are not at risk. I guess you're still putting your teammates at risk, but if everyone is kind of depositing at the same time, now the invader's potentially coming over and no one really has any moats. Whereas before, the whole point of invasion was that your team would deposit a bunch of moats, put a bunch of blockers there, and the other team would be fighting against blockers uh, to try and deposit their own moats before the invader came in and killed them. Um, can it be argued that this is a better system? Maybe. I think it's a little illogical. It doesn't really kind of work with the flow of what we've known from Gambit for so long now, and like it doesn't make a ton of sense in my opinion. Um, also what we've seen is like this does really nothing to prevent kind of core problems with invasion in general. The wall hacks, uh, I know they literally nerfed Gallarhorn PvP tracking, which 
I have seen does literally nothing. I, I, you will see pretty much every invader kill here is a Gallarhorn kill, uh, often from Wolfpack rounds. Like it's, I don't think that has changed at all. I think a big problem. I, I think they made the invasion problem a lot worse just by giving everyone guaranteed access to heavy ammo at the end of every single round. That means every single person on the other team has the potential to get, you know, two or three Gallarhorn rockets before they invade, which makes the problem worse. I am not, at this point, I am not opposed to the drastic step of just eliminating heavy ammo entirely when you invade and then just giving it back to people when they when they return. I think invasion has been way, way too reliant on heavy ammo forever. Like, heavy ammo and in invasion has been the problem for pretty much the entire duration of the mode. Whether now it's Gallarhorn, before this it was, you know, other forms of tracking rockets, it was Sleeper Simulant, it was Queen Breaker's Bow, it was... Uh, Truth, uh, not true. Yeah, it was truth for a little bit. Uh, it's Eyes of Tomorrow, and that was pretty good for a time. Like it is always, always, always heavy. It's getting just a, enough heavy to get two, three, four kills, and then leaving. Um, I think if you eliminated it heavy, you would at least be forcing people into uh, actual combat. I think you are already at a, at a large advantage in combat with your overshield and with your um, ability to see wall hacks. So. Uh, you know, if you're just a crazy good sniper and you, you get in there and you knock off four kills with your sniper, you know what? More power to you. I think that is pretty good. I, I, I'm not going to frown upon that, but um, going rolling in with heavy. Yeah, there was a, a mach yeah, machine gun era too. I remember that. Like, it's it's always heavy. That is the problem 90% of the time. And I think that is uh, one of the main issues that needs to be addressed. That is not something that comes up in this Invader Swap Gambit Lab. It just kind of changes the... The, the timing of, the, of invasions, but like it, it, it makes you coordinate more with your team under the system, which is just never going to happen in, in freelance. So freelance is just kind of a mess and you feel like you have even less control over what's going on. Cause like, well, I might be saving for 15 boats cause I know that's the optimal like prisoner's dilemma thing to do in the situation. My team is not going to do that probably. Uh, so I, and so what I have to run a four stack gambit to make it productive. I don't know. Um, so I, I don't know. It's an interesting experiment. I do not think this really cuts at the core of what is wrong with Gambit and Invasion. Uh, I know they're going to be running a separate Gambit lab uh, later on. That's It's something about Moat Drain. I'm not 100% I'm not sure about what exactly it is there, but I remember being very Moat Drain focused. I kind of hate Moat Draining, so I don't know how excited I am about that. Uh, I think the main problem, as ever, with Invasion is a combination of wall hacks and heavy ammo. I don't necessarily think it is invasion timing. I think invasion timing was probably addressed enough with the way they spaced it out and you can't bank invasions anymore. Uh, the first one's at 40, there's only two in the first phase. Like I, I think that was enough to kind of fix the maybe the timing problem with invasion, but the actual like functionality of invasion I think remains a problem. It has remained a problem for as long as everyone said heavy ammo <laughs> to invade uh, and for as long as your entire I mean, your entire match pretty much relies on your invader. If you have a team like my team, including me, that just did not want to invade, you're going to lose, and we lost. Uh, if you have a team with a really good invader that came in with a dedicated invader loadout, which at this point is just Gallarhorn, you, and you can not get killed instantly, you're probably going to win. So uh, Gambit is still, I think, too heavily reliant on invasion overall. You know, <laughs> are we ever going to experiment with no invasion Gambit, so it's just a pure moat race? No idea. I'm not opposed to it. I want to. I'd like to uh, experiment with that at least, but uh, that is not in the cards for now. So, anyway, this is uh, a weird kind of little bizarro world experiment with Gambit. I do not really see a reason to play too much of this at the moment uh, because I don't think it is significantly more <laughs> fun than normal Gambit. So get your pinnacle, get out, whatever, and then we'll see what the next one does. So, anyway, uh, that's all I got for now, and I will talk to you guys later. Take care.